Help is on the way for an elderly person in need in Hertfordshire. But East of England ambulance call operators aren't sending an ambulance. They're sending an early intervention vehicle with a council-employed occupational therapist on board. It's being piloted here for over 65s with non-life-threatening conditions. When they arrive, a paramedic judges if the patient can be treated immediately at home without a trip to hospital. Around 80% of patients have been treated this way, taking the strain off urgently needed hospital beds, though that's not always possible. So the early intervention team has assessed the patient and they've decided that she needs to go to hospital. The key to successful integration for Hertfordshire has been able to uh, collaboratively look at how we use our resources um, to have pooled, pooled budgets to allow us to understand where spend is and to let us make conscientious decisions about how best to use that money, to come up with ideas to problems that sit between our organisations, to not look at things in silos but to look at things collaboratively. This Hertfordshire hospital is also a good example of how collaboration can help. You won't find an A&E unit or overnight beds here anymore. The closest ones are 20 minutes down the road. What's left is nurse-led care in an NHS-built hospital. Despite a politically toxic change, this reconfiguration went through after broad public and political consultation with hospital clinicians and GPs on board. It's a notable achievement that's surely of interest to 60% of NHS trusts in England that reported a deficit at the end of September. It's not just here that the NHS needs to save money and provide a better way of doing things. The government is going to pour in an extra £8 billion into the NHS in England, but it has demanded £22 billion worth of efficiencies across the country. In order to deliver that, the NHS has created 44 health and care partnerships and each one will provide a sustainability and transformation plan or STP to integrate care, provide better services and save money. So far, 33 of these 44 regional plans drawn up by senior people in the health service and local government have been published. The NHS has been through five years of severely constrained spending growth and there are another four to five years on the way, at least. That is a highly unusual situation. STPs themselves are an attempt to deal in a planned way with that drastic situation. But with plans to close some accident and emergency units and reduce the number of hospital beds, there's likely to be a tough political battle ahead with many MPs already up in arms about proposed changes in their area. This Tory backbencher is concerned about the local plans for his community hospital in Dorset. I wouldn't call it an efficiency if you're proposing to close all of the beds which are currently provided for those coming out of the acute sector who are elderly and who are looking for intermediate care. That's not a cut, that's not an efficiency saving, that is a closure. All 44 STPs should be published in a month's time, ready for public consultation. Questions to the Prime Minister! But even before that, they dominated this week's PMQs. The government's sustainability and transformation plans for the National Health Service hide £22 billion of cuts. The National Health Service is indeed looking for savings within the NHS, which will be reinvested in the NHS. There will be no escape from angry MPs for the health secretary either. Well, I have spoken to the Secretary of State just this week about the importance of community hospitals in general and Shaftesbury uh, in particular. These are proposals out to consultation. So what could happen if these plans do get blocked? If STPs can't be made to work, the, pro the plan changes don't come to pass, then the NHS is going to see over time a sort of unplanned deterioration and, and services becoming unstable and, and quali service quality being affected. So is the political will there? The NHS barely featured in this week's autumn statement, but the Prime Minister insisted beforehand that STPs are in the interests of local people. Her government's support will now be critical for NHS England to push through these controversial regional plans, which will soon face public scrutiny. Thank you, Peter, for coming and have a blessed day.